Hello. So, still recording on the phone. Um, but this one I'm really excited about. Um, I literally just closed this book. It's called Saints and Misfits. It's by S.K. Ali. Ali. Don't really know how to pronounce it. Anyway. Um, it's about a Muslim girl named Jana. And she is very much involved in her, in the Muslim religion and in the Muslim community. Um, and a few weeks before the book starts, another fellow Muslim who is also very involved at the mosque and in the, in their community, he sexually assaults her. Um, blunt, sorry. (laughs) And I'm not giving anything away. That's very clear right at the very beginning of the book. Um, but so the story, as the story goes, it's her dealing with that because touching in general is just against her religion. Um, sorry, I should not have said in general. (sighs) Touching of the opposite sex is, um, something that she doesn't do. Like, it's not a casual thing. Um, they have chaperones on their dates until they're married, you know, things like that. And so the fact that she has been sexually assaulted by this guy that she knows from her Muslim community, who is also an upstanding Muslim, everybody thinks he's amazing. He's memorized the Quran. Um, he's supposed to be this great role model type of guy. And, Um, so she deals, for most of the book, she's dealing with feelings of shame. Um, and, and I loved it. I loved the way it was written. Um, I loved how I got to see, how you see into her thought process. Um, because she doesn't say anything for so long. She doesn't think people will believe her because of who he is, how he's memorized the Quran and he's that role model type of figure. Everyone just adores him at their mosque. And so she doesn't think anyone will believe her. Um, and she's just dealing with it. And I love that I read this right now because the, um, hashtag me too campaign, I have found that fascinating and I love how it's been empowering women to speak up and say, this is not okay. And it's so common. Um, And it's common in every culture because that's something else that Jana in the story is worried about. She's afraid that if she comes forward with this, people, because they're in the United States, um, she's afraid that people will just, will react in a negative way towards Muslims in general. Like, look, they don't even follow their religion. Um, They're bad people, you know, things like that, where some people are nervous around Muslims already anyway, and she doesn't want to make her community suffer, which is skewed and noble at the same time. Um, and I think that that's a really important lesson there that one individual does not ever represent the whole of a community. Um, thought processes like that are just so inappropriate. That's not okay. Um, but anyway, and so it's her dealing with these feelings of shame and being so insecure about it. And just every time she sees him and she sees him frequently, it's so uncomfortable for her and she just needs to get away from him, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's one scene where an acquaintance of hers, I don't know if friend is the right word, is kind of, she finally opens up to this other girl. And the other girl listens, but then kind of reprimands her in sort of a harsh way, um, saying, if you aren't going to stand up for yourself and say something, nothing is going to change. Um, and she kind of then sparks a little fire in Jana to speak up and speak out and let people know what happened and that that is not okay. And okay, spoilers, warning. I'm just going to kind of tell you what happens. Um, she does finally speak out and gets authority type of people involved. Um, she go, her uncle runs the mosque. He's, I don't know the right term here, but he's the head guy. And so she finally tells him and he believes her, um, just because of who she is. She's an upstanding person. He knows her really, really well. And he apologizes to her. And then he is like, you need to tell your mother and your brother. And so she finally tells them and her mother goes, why didn't you say something? Like I could have been helping you this whole time. And then she suddenly has this unconditional love support system. And I think that is so key. Um, I have not experienced anything like sexual assault. I, with the hashtag me too campaign, I, I don't have a story to share. That's never happened to me for which I am really, really grateful. Um, but there are so many and it can be something so small. It doesn't have to be a full, I'm 
trying not to get gruesome here. It doesn't have to be a full-blown attack to be considered sexual assault. Sexual assault can be little things that just are inappropriate and make someone feel uncomfortable. And you have no right to treat someone that way or touch them or whatever it is. Speak to them a certain way, blah, 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 you know? But it doesn't have to be something huge to still be sexual assault. It's inappropriate regardless of how big the act is because the repercussions and the way it makes the attackee feel is always big. Okay? Drive that home really quick. So, in Jana's case, it was not, um, he did not rape her, but it was sexual assault. And again, because of her religion, I think it, I think the way it affects her, not that, not that non-religious people shouldn't feel this way. That's not what I'm saying. But I think also because of her religion, there was more shame, um, involved in what happened just because of how much it went against all these rules and standards that she tries so hard to follow. She doesn't hold guys' hands. She doesn't kiss anybody. She doesn't go on dates. Um, so because he broke all those boundaries, even the littler ones like holding hands and she didn't get to choose when that boundary was broken, I think that affected her so much worse. Um, again, I'm not trying to say that non-religious women don't have the right to feel that way. That's not what I'm saying. Everybody, if anything little happens, you have the right to be upset and to say this is not okay because it's not, it's never okay. Um, so anyway, in the story though, she does speak out. And like I said, she has this support system. And I think that that is something that all women need. And I, for one, if anyone came to me, even if it was an acquaintance that I didn't know very well and said that something had happened, I would rally around with them and I would try to help. That actually did happen recently. Uh, I'm going to be really vague. Someone I know um, was sexually assaulted and was very open about it, which I see as very, very strong and very brave. Um, because she did not hesitate to tell, she wasn't hesitating to tell anybody from what I could see. Um, her family knew, she was telling me, she was telling her friends, school or classmates, coworkers, you know, she was being very open about it. And I think in some ways that was helping her deal with how she felt. Um, because it was not her fault. No one is ever asking for it. Your clothes are never an invitation. Those excuses are ridiculous. Um, but so she was able, so since she told me though, I then checked in with her to see how she was dealing. Even though, like I said, I don't know her well. She's an acquaintance. But I checked in with her to see how she was, if she was feeling better about things. Um, I was praying for her that she would that this wouldn't affect her self-esteem and her confidence in herself and that she'd be able to move on and move past it. Unfortunately, they were not able to figure out, um, the guy was not caught who did this. Um, but she is, she's okay. She's been okay. And it's because I think part of it is because she was able to talk about it and address it and recognize that this was not her fault. Um, I recognize that sometimes we can't control our feelings as well as we would like. And so if there's shame involved in any of these cases, I can totally see that. And those feelings are valid. But in the book, Jana is feeling these huge feelings of shame, like I've said. And at one point when she finally is dealing and confronting the situation, she talks about how the shame finally leaves her. And instead it's this anger that that happened and that he did something like that. And it's this desire to let people know that he did that sort of thing so that it won't happen again. And it's this desire to help change things for other women and girls. Um, and she talks about the shame being displaced that she did not deserve to feel ashamed because this wasn't on her. She had nothing to do with it that of all people, he should feel ashamed for breaking his religious standards that he pretends to uphold very hypocritical and also shame in just that he did that in general, regardless of your religious affiliation, he should feel ashamed that he thought that was okay. And that he did what he did. Um, I'm not being super articulate. And for that, I apologize, but I hope I'm getting my point across. I loved this book because it addressed hard things in a great way. No 
no gruesome details. It was not graphic, but you could feel, you could feel it. Um, my husband at one point asked if my book was good and I was like, this is so good. I'm, I'm engrossed in it. It really just captured me because those feelings were so authentic. Um, and even, like I said, even though I have never been on the other end of anything like that, this book was written in a way that I felt sad for Jana. I felt frustration in the situation. I felt anger about the guy. I wanted her to say something. I had this drive to honestly, I had a drive to make a difference. And that character that she opens up to who then reprimands her and is kind of like, you need to do something if you want things to change. That actually drove me to do something yesterday, totally unrelated to the topic of the novel. Um, but I was kind of like, no, if you want things to change, you do sometimes have to step up and do it. Be the change. You, what is that quote? Be the change you want to see in the world. It's real. And in the battle against sexual assault and the Me Too campaign, I love it. If we want things to change, we as women need to speak out. Instead of feeling ashamed and dirty and worrying that we are at fault, you're not at fault. You are not at fault. Um, maybe a few bad choices lead up to what happened, but it is it is never your fault. No man or guy or whatever has the right to do anything like that to you, regardless of what you're wearing or how you look or what you like. No, no means no. Leave me alone means leave me alone. There is no hidden meeting. <laughs> so we as women need to, I feel like we should rally together. Be like Jana and that character that helps encourage her to confront things. And I love the Me Too campaign just because it's helping people have a voice. And I think that is so important. Anyway, this video got long and kind of rambly. So thanks for watching if you're still with me. I highly recommend this book. And I, and I, I think I recommend it for people who have been in Jana's situation. This might, if you've been struggling with finding your voice and speaking out and speaking up, I really recommend this because like I said, that speech helped impact me in a totally different way. And so I hope that it can help you. It's called Saints and Misfits. Really, really well done. Very well written. Came out this year. Um, read it. You should read it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep reading. Bye.